Hey, hey, eighth grade. So our learning target today is I can evaluate expressions using two quotient properties. We just got done doing product properties. Quotient properties kind of work in the opposite way. So some of the product properties properties required us to use the distributive property, uh, required us to multiply and add. So sometimes we're adding exponents, sometimes we're multiplying the exponents. So that's what happens when you have a power of products, products with powers. When we have quotients or divisions, we tend to subtract, still sometimes using the distributive property. So we have two major ones here. We're going to have the quotient of powers property. Quotient meaning division when you have exponents. And then we have power of quotient property. So you're going to kind of see how that works. The language in this unit is super confusing. So we're going to break it down into parts. Over the course of the unit, you will get better at this. It's just the language is really tricky right now. So what happens when you have a quotient of powers property? That means you have the same base and you have a two different powers. Not even necessarily two different powers, but what we would do in this case is we would subtract. So we would subtract the powers, but you have to have the same base in order for that to work. In our last lesson, what we do is when we have the same base and we are multiplying, we would add the powers because addition and multiplication work together. Likewise, division and subtraction work together. So to divide, to divide powers having the same base in this unit, we're going to, or this lesson, we're going to actually subtract the exponents. So we're going to try a couple examples. So if we said we had 3 to the 4th divided by 3 to the 1st. So go ahead and write that down. We have the base of 3 to the 4th. We have dividing by the base of 3 to the 1st. When that happens, what we do is we actually subtract the exponents. So that becomes 3 as the base to the 4 minus 1, which is 3 to the 3rd power. So we end up with 3 to the third power. Now one thing that you can think about in the, just like a little brain box over here is you have four of these up here and we only have one on the bottom. So as we start to cancel those out, you're left with three of them, three to the third power. Just a little brain box there. Everything that I have in red is actually the work that's required. So let's take a, take a look at another example like that. So we have four to the fifth power divided by four to the third power. So you have the same base, the same base of 4. Our powers are 5 and 3, and we're dividing. So when we're dividing, we should actually be subtracting the powers. So the base is 4. And we end up with 5 minus 3 as our powers. We have 4 to the 5 minus 3, which gives us 4 to the second power. We're going to leave everything in exponential form right now with an exponent, just so that we're comfortable with our work today. Now, if you were in class, I would have you do this next section called you try, but since you're not, we're going to do it together to make sure there's some clear instruction on this. These are quotient of powers property, quotient meaning dividing. So when you divide, you would subtract the power. So we'd have the same base here, which is 6. We would subtract the power. So 6 to the 11 minus 5 gives us 6 to the, and 11 minus 5 is 6. So it's 6 to the 6th power. Now in a little brain box, and I want you to write this down, I just want you to think about what's happening here. In the numerator over here, I have 6 to the 11th, so that means I have 11 sixes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 on the top. In the bottom, I have 5 sixes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I start to cancel those out, because 6 divided by 6 is 1, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 6 divided by 6 is 1, and so on. I'm left with these. I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the 6s. That was just a little brain box of what's happening. That's another option for you is to always expand it out because you're just looking for an answer. But it's a lot faster to know the property. This is a division problem. You have to have the same base of 8, which we do. And then we just subtract the power. 10 minus 4, we get a 6. So it's 8 to the 6th power. Next problem, we have negative 3 as our base, and we're going to subtract the power. So 9 minus 3 is 6. So we have negative 3 to the 6th power. So you're just subtracting those because division and subtraction are related, and multiplication and addition are related. And next problem here, we have 9 to the 4th multiplied by 9 to the 3rd. So we're going to have two different powers here. First, we're going to take care of this, which is back to Monday or a couple days ago lesson. So the base there is 9. When we multiply, 
we actually add the powers because multiplication and in addition are connected. 4 plus 3 is 7. In the denominator, I end up with 9 to the second power. So my base there is 9. Now I'm moving to a brand new property, which we just learned today, which is when there's division, we subtract the powers. So let's to the fifth power. Answer is 9 to the fifth power. So let's go back to what just happened here. In the numerator, I had to clean this up. Uh, this is the property we learned the other day, is when we're multiplying something with the same base, we get to add the powers. So that's 9 to the 4 plus 3. Numerator then is 9 to the 7th. We just drag that denominator over, so we have 9 to the 7th divided by 9 to the second power. Our new property for today said if you're dividing powers with bases that has to be the same base, so that 9 has to be the same, then we can subtract the power 7 minus 2 is 5. The answer is 9 to the 5th power. Okay, so we're moving to our new property, a different property. A different property says this. is so you have a fraction, division problem. That's where that word quotient comes from. It's a division problem, but all fractions are division problems. And there's a power there. We're going to use the idea of the distributive property that we're going to send it into the top. And we're going to send it into the bottom. So it becomes a to the m divided by a, by b, sorry. <laughs> b is the bottom number, b to the m. So we give the m to the top as a power. We give the m to the bottom as a power. So the rule says this. To find a power of a quotient, the wording in this unit is awful. I'm so sorry, guys. You need to find the power of the numerator. So you're going to give that power to the numerator. And the power of the denominator. You're going to give that power, the same power to the denominator using the idea of the distributive property. So here's an example then. If I have the fraction 2 thirds, and all of that, let's say, is to the second power. What we're going to do then is we're going to take that 2, we're going to drop it in here, and we're going to drop it in there. So that becomes 2 to the second power over 3 to the second power. Now I'm fine with you leaving your answer like that in today's work because it does say no calculator on the top of the screen if you're not great with your powers, although these problems are pretty small. 2 to the second power is 4. 3 to the second power is 9, so our answer is 4 ninths. 4 ninths. Example number 2. Let's put an X on top. And let's put a 4 on the bottom. And let's do power 2, I guess. Let's just keep it kind of nice and small for us today in our work. This is called the power of a quotient property. So you have this power on the outside, but it needs to be sent in. We need to kill this parenthesis. So we send it in and we drop it here and we drop it there. So it becomes x to the second power in the numerator over 4 to the second power in the denominator. So we have x to the second power over 4 to the second power. And that gives us x to the second power over 16 is another way to write that. Now, I'm fine with you leaving the other answer, but really you should be able to handle that 4 to the second power is 16. Okay, so now this you try section, if, you, if I were in class with you, I would have you try it yourself, give you some time to work, but since it's a video, I'm going to work through it with you. We have this fraction in a parenthesis. We need to kill the parenthesis. So we're going to send the power into the top and to the bottom. That becomes 1 to the fifth over 3 to the fifth. Now, I'm okay with you leaving your answer like that since you can't use a calculator today. So that would be fine if you want to leave your answer like that in today's work. Otherwise, you could expand that 3 to the fifth power. You could expand both of those if we were able to use a calculator. But I'm fine just kind of stopping there and just getting rid of the parentheses and kind of just taking baby steps in this unit. And when we work, do some work tomorrow, I'll have us kill that a little bit more. Next problem, we have this fraction. We're going to kill the parentheses. We're going to distribute the 3 to the top and the bottom, which becomes x to the third over y to the third. And they're both variables, so there really isn't anything else for us to do. They're different variables. They're unlike terms. We have x to the third over y to the third. Next problem here, I want you to distribute that negative to the numerator, and I want you to throw a parenthesis around anytime we have a negative when there's a power coming in. We're going to send that 5 to the top and send that 5 to the bottom, so that becomes negative 2 to the fifth power over five to the fifth power. And because we can't use a calculator today, I'm going to have you just stop there. That's just practicing killing the parentheses, sending that power in. Okay, this next problem here. I want you to really spread this out. In the numerator, we have x squared. In the denominator, we have three multiplied by y cubed all to the power of two. Go ahead and write that down, please. Really, really stretch that out. OK, 
okay, as we send it in then, we distribute here, here, and here. So when two powers hit, we learned the other day that it's multiplication, that's x to the fourth in the numerator. In the denominator, we get three to the second power because we're sending it in, multiplication sign in the middle. We have y to the third power. When two times three hits, that's multiplication. So we have x to the fourth in the numerator, numerator and we have three squared times y to the sixth in the denominator. I'm fine with you leaving your answer like that today. Or some of you know that three squared is nine and drop the multiplication sign. Either one of those purple boxes is fine with me today in our work. Okay, guys, so hanging in there. Now the last one is gonna be combining the two properties, actually combining kind of everything we've learned so far in unit six. So they get a little bit ugly here. This next property here, this problem. So we have a fraction and a whole number with a base, not really a whole number, I guess. So I'm gonna make them into two fractions. We know to kill two fractions, what we do is we multiply the numerators and then we multiply the denominators, which shouldn't be any problem here because we're just multiplying by one. So the top in the yellow highlight, we have one multiplied by nine to the 11th. Multiplying by one does not change the problem out at all. So we end up with nine to the 11th in the numerator. In the denominator, we have nine to the fifth times one. Again, nothing changes when we multiply by one. So we have nine to the 11th divided by nine to the fifth. This is the property that we just learned today, which is called the quotient property. When you're dividing and you have the same base, the key is that nine is the base of both of those or it doesn't work. If you have the same base of nine there, we can go ahead and subtract the power. So it becomes nine to the 11 minus five or nine to the sixth power. And I'm fine with you leaving your answer like that. Next problem, same thing. But first thing I need to do is I need to kill this parenthesis that has a fraction in it. So we learned today that we're going to send that just idea of the distributive property. We're going to send that four into the top and send the four into the bottom it becomes one to the fourth over three to the fourth. If I haven't used it, I drag it down. To clean up this problem, we're going to write a fraction by writing it over one. So we sent the four into the top and the bottom. We kill parentheses and now we clean this up. Something to look at. One to the fourth power is really one times one times one times one. So this is really just a one here. Just keep that in mind. As I clean this up, when we kill fractions, we multiply numerators and we multiply denominators. So we multiply those numerators. We have a one multiplied by three to the 12th power. It's just three to the 12th power. In the denominator, anytime we multiply by one, it doesn't change anything. We have three to the fourth power multiplied by one. It's just three to the fourth power. And we just learned in this unit that whenever you're dividing, as long as you have the same base of three, you have to have the same base there, we subtract the power. So we have a three, and we have 12 minus four is three to the eighth power. Answer is three to the eighth power. Again, when you're dividing things with the same base, we subtract the power. Next problem, I'd like you to really spread this out. I want you to, I recognize that that's two times R in the numerator. In the denominator, we have three times T, all to the third power. <clears throat> So we really have four things in there. We have a two times an R and a three times a T. So that three has to be distributed once, twice, three times, four times. It has to go in everywhere. And there isn't any other powers in there, so we just get to drop. So that's two to the third power times R to the third power divided by three to the third power times T to the third power. Go ahead and check out how I distributed that three in four different times there to the third power times r to the third power divided by three to the third power over t to the third power. As I start to clean up this problem then, you could leave your answer like that if you're not good with your powers, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that that's eight. Two times two times two is eight. r to the third power in the numerator. In the denominator, this three times three times three. So three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27 t to the third power. So there is our actual answer, 8r cubed divided by 27t cubed. If you want to leave your answer in red for today's work because you can't use a calculator, I'm fine with that. But otherwise, I'd really like you to get that to the last step. And so for our last problem for today, for our last problem for today, what I'd like you to do is really think about what's going on here. On the left, we have to kill this parenthesis. We're going to use the distributive property here and here. So we end up with x 
I don't need the parentheses anymore because I'm going to kill it right now. We have x to the 2 times 4. Remember when two powers hit each other, it's multiplication. We have x to the 8th in the top. In the bottom, we have y to the 3rd power times 4. We're going to send that 4 in. 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. y to the 12th power. Okay, so now what we have is uh, two different fractions. We can multiply across the tops, multiply across the bottoms. Multiply tops, multiply bottoms. So as I do that, then I end up with x to the eighth in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm just going to rearrange things so that it's a little bit sorted different. We have a 3 times an x to the fifth times a y to the twelfth. And that's just a math teacher thing. We like things in alphabetical order. As math teachers, you'll start to learn that as you go through high school math. I just rearrange the order of that. I get to do that using the commutative property. And recognizing right here, there's a property that says when you're dividing and you have the same base of x, you get to subtract the powers. So that's 8 minus 5. So it leaves us x to the third. There's three of them left in the numerator. In the denominator, I still have this thing and that thing, 3y to the 12th. Now, you can always expand that. You can expand 8 x's in the top, and you have 5 x's in the bottom. And you would recognize that 5 of those x's are going to cancel, leaving us with 3 x's in the top left. And we have 3 y squared in the bottom. 3 y squared in the bottom. Okay, so for your homework, for your summary then for today, here's our summary. So what we learned about today is that the division, when we're dividing, as long as you have the same base, you subtract the powers. We learned that if you have a fraction to a power, you need to send it in twice. So a to the m divided by m to the, a to the m divided by b to the m. You kill the parentheses then when you do that. And when you don't know what to do, expand and simplify is kind of the key of surviving if you're stuck. Your homework for tonight is to finish all of page 9 and all of page 10 due tomorrow. Have a fabulous night in grade.